so this is my the inside of my steampunk Nixie clock that will have a solenoid driven gong now if you're like me there you want to do this and there's no videos on how to do it there's people that have done it and there's absolutely no videos on how to do it so I'm gonna go through briefly what I've done and show you so all my electrical components are ordered from digikey.com and uh, so we've got a 12 volt power supply that is rated I believe up to 70 watts and I believe a 6 amp draw um, I brought my plug down to my homemade driver board um, it's just got some terminals uh, 270R resistor, some Optos isolators, MOSFETs, some diodes, and a 10K resistor. And then our power line is fed to both circuits. These driver lines, there's two driver circuits. One's for the solenoid and one's for something else that I'm adding on. Um, so if you want to do two chimes, you'd, you'd need one circuit per solenoid and one solenoid per chime note um, unless you are doing a cord and then most of the mechanisms out there they'll they're designed to pull one cord all at once and drop it onto the bars all at once so you'd only need one solenoid so um, these are my signal wires and they're coming in to the rearmost driver at the top and these will be going to the open GPIO on the Nixie clock you have to have at least one unused GPIO and a GPIO ground in order to run a single solenoid um, for every additional solenoid you need another open GPIO so if you want to run say a Westminster chime like most of the ones that are out there on YouTube that Again, don't show you how to do this. You'd need five unused GPIO ports on your Nixie clock board. Now, on the bottom terminal, we've got our solenoid wires. They're coming down to the deck onto a plug so that I can remove the board out of the slots and if I have to do some tuning or adjusting or whatever then I can so that just plugs on there you don't have to do that it's just ease of access for myself so now underneath we have our gong bolts um, this is an Adafruit 12 volt solenoid with a um, 10 centimeter travel pull. It's a pull solenoid. Um, these ones, of course, they have a, a, a piece on the back which makes it able to be a push and pull solenoid. Um, then I've got a pin. You can see the brass pin right there. And I've used just some bead wire. Um, that's all I'm using. And I've crimped it with the bead wire crimp beads, I guess they're called. And I've crimped a loop here. And that allows me to pull the wire. I've got a stubble dacked quarter inch block. And I've used, I don't even know what, I think it's 3 16 brass tube and I've bent it with a torch and some pliers and I got a fairly smooth bend out of it um, and it's seated in and bent and then it comes up to the gong board and we've got our hole here so when we pull the solenoid pulls in it lifts the hammer so we've got our gong again mounted here um, our gong bar, our chime bar, 
Now, my hammer, being it's a single hammer, is custom made, fully custom made. The only thing that is from an actual clock mechanism is the hammer and the initial first rod. I've taken some brass I-beam and channeled it into uh, some larger brass tube and I used two hobby flange bearings out of an RC car. Um, <clears throat> I just went into the hobby store and said I've got these two types of tubes what kind of bearing is going to fit them? They happen to have some? Perfect. Um, then I've got your set collars. They usually you find these on airplanes on the landing gear model airplanes. Um, then this is just some brass plate that I had kicking around and I soldered my rod straight to it. Uh, I drilled a hole first, uh, the size of the rod, and pushed the rod in and soldered it just to make it more strong. Um, two screws to screw it in. And then uh, I built this brace um, to stop flex when it hits the uh, up stop. which is kind of important because without this brace, this tube here, the whole thing would bend down, which was no good. Um, then the I-beam gets doubled up in the back half, and I used my Dremel to shape it to conquer uh, curve to the tube. <laughs> then I add a, added a triangular support, and again I shaped the I-beam with the Dremel to uh, fit the curve of the tube. Then I just soldered on uh, some scrap brass with a hole in it for my filament wire. Now this is, I guess, your down stop. Um, again, scrap brass pa uh, plate. Single screw because there isn't any pressure being put on this bar. Um, drilled a hole, soldered the tube in. This is uh, moose suede and I've doubled it up. It just acting as a silencer um, padding for when the bar hits the back end here. Um, then we've got our up stop and it's not finished yet. There'll be some padding here and when all said and done along with setting the timing on the on the uh, Nixie clock this will at worst case it'll hit here and that'll stop the solenoid from bottoming out the biggest issue you'll find if you build one of these is silencing the clacking from the solenoid bottoming out on the return and the energized movement um, so yeah there'll be some padding on here and that'll hit the padding and be silenced there. Um, this is 1 8 rod threaded with a 632 thread die, uh, solid brass rod, and then some 6 32 nuts. <clears throat> um, the solenoid is a chassis mount open frame. It mounts with four bolts, and I've added two layers of. Uh, craft felt just for insulation, um, sound insulation. This is three quarter inch oak board again uh, for insulation. I had some quarter inch uh, plywood in it, just unreal sound that was reverberating through it. So I had to rebuild and redesign a little bit. Um, then under my bracket here, um, this is an L shaped bracket, and you can see the felt under there as well, just a single layer. And then I've got a grommet in that hole, and the filament goes through it. So now on the return spring, it's hitting the grommet. And again, silencing purposes. So, um, firing this doesn't work real great right now because I'm firing it with a 9 volt battery just by quickly tapping the wires to it. So I've got a makeshift power plug hooked up to my power supply. So I've got it plugged in now. My power supply is energized. 
I'm going to take my positive and negative, negative signal wires that will go to the GPIO port on the Nixie clock circuit board and I've got my 9 volt battery here to simulate the 5 volt charge that's going to go uh, to my driver. So bear with me here. And for some reason my solenoid lately has been sticking. I don't know why. I've got to look into that. So there's a clean fire. Another clean fire. So you can see how that works. Now, there's a few times where you may have heard that hard clicking sound. That's going to be resolved in the written code for the solenoid on the uh, microcontroller within the Nixie clock itself. Um, I'm probably ordering a four digit remote mount. Um, I think he calls it the classic Nixie from Ian Sparks. Uh, I believe he's in the UK. Uh, I'm going to be running IN12s uh, for this clock. And basically to get a clean chime, we're going to have to adjust the sound on, um, or the solenoid energized time down to literally like 5 to 10 milliseconds so that it's not energizing the solenoid 100%. And that'll help keep the energized portion when it slams back. That's the clicking you're hearing. When it returns, you're not going to hear that because the gong or the chime drowns out the sound. Um, this is a work in progress. Um, once it's done, of course, I'll post a, f a finished video and again explain everything. Um, I'm new to making these videos, so bear with me. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, I'll help you the best I can. Um, aside from that, this is kind of where it's at right now. Uh, I've had to rebuild the entire gong system. 